to our uh, October compliance meeting. Okay, you know, as a as a great company, you know, it's a uh, and and you know, as all being licensed by the Department of Real Estate, you know, it's uh, very important to be able to always know that we, uh, as a company, we always try to stay in compliance and we. We always keep you in compliance of any kind of new laws or regulations that come out or what's coming out for 2020. You know, it's, uh, it's one of our duties. You know, one of my duties as a, my, your supervising broker is that, you know, I always have these type of events where you come and I can update you on, uh, all the, on all the new rules and what's happening and so that you always feel like you're aware of what's going on, okay? So I'm going to, uh, there's going to be some festivities. Obviously, we have a a nice uh, potluck so we could try everyone's favorite dish, you know, uh, uh, at the end of the meeting. Okay, we have some nice uh, uh, awards that we're doing that we're going to start doing every uh, every compliance meeting. And uh, so let's uh, get going. And then I have, of course, some training for everyone, as always, okay, to see how we could uh, take ourselves to the next level. Okay, so uh, first thing of compliance is that there are always rules coming up or rule changes coming up for 2020. And uh, we always either try to find or look up uh, uh, these events uh, or these rules all the time. And so these are some of the things that we found that we thought were interesting and let's talk about it, okay? One of the things that we found, which I think is uh, very interesting, is that uh, Next year, uh, one of the things that uh, is being released in January 1st, 2020, are that there's a law with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that may allow, okay, and I'll just read it, okay, I'll just read it, okay, uh, for certain home sales, uh, $400,000, uh, will no longer require an appraisal, okay? Will no longer require an appraisal as figure regulators increase the threshold at which residential home sales require an appraisal. Right now, there are certain types of sales that do not require an appraisal as long as they're under $250,000. It could be a streamlined uh, refinance, you know, uh, just, just certain types of loans don't require an appraisal, and the threshold is $250,000. Uh, next year, that threshold is being increased to $400,000. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so for people who do loans, you know, hopefully it'll make life easier, <coughs> okay? And, uh, and uh, obviously it's for a certain specific category of, uh, of property. Does that make sense? Okay, mm -hmm. certain specific, specific category of property. Well, well really, on a purchase, you will need it, but, but on certain streamlines and so forth, you won't, okay? So the threshold right now is uh, loans under 250, and they're raising it to 400, okay? And that's in 2020. Mm -hmm. And that actually, go ahead. Will that affect the Bay Area versus like Sacramento or? Well, it's, it's 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 all around, but it's just there's not a lot of loan amounts, you know, under 400 in the Bay Area. Okay, um, uh, so in court, in conjunction with what the government is doing, VA, you know, we are we have the best VA products here at our company, and I'm very proud of that too. And for VA, uh, they're making uh, it says here. VA to back loans that exceed conforming loan limits. What VA is doing next year is VA loan limits are being eliminated. Oh. Okay, so that's another thing that's coming up in 2020. And so I'm straight out reading it is, is this new law enables home buyers using VA loans mm -hmm. to borrow above the $484,000 loan limit in most counties, oh. mm -hmm. okay? So that's another rule that uh, that is uh, coming out. Okay, that's another thing that's coming out. All right. So there's uh, there are so so we're gonna post so I could get into the meeting. Okay. 
uh, they're going to post uh, certain. Uh, we're going to post certain rule changes that are coming up for 2020. Okay. Uh, another thing is, is so look for this. Is there's a change in the real estate uh, law for 2020 in with the Department of Real Estate, and there's going to be the law is that there's going to be technical changes that will change how we do our TDSs, our, our NHD, and our agency disclosures. So keep, a, keep an eye out for my emails to you, is that they're changing those forms in 2020. So if you deal with, uh, if you deal with, obviously we deal with the TDS, the NHD, and the agency disclosure. So because of that, we're they're changing certain things in that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's move on. Let's move on. So Jordan, yeah. the short sell package, let's make sure Linda gets it to the back okay. office, okay? okay. And make sure they can get them All right. I have some, uh, we have a list of uh, new agents that uh, joined us within the last few months. The list is pretty long, but I don't think everyone is here. So what I'd like to do is that if you are uh, new, to the company within the last couple months, I would like to introduce you to our more senior agents. Now, a lot of agents come to the meetings uh, live and in person, but we actually have a lot of agents that attend our meetings from the from the from the web. You know, obviously we can't fit everyone in this room. Okay, so if you're new in the last couple months, I'd like to just introduce you. You know, have you stand up, introduce yourself, and and uh, so everyone can sort of say hi, and uh, and uh, maybe during our mixer, after the after our meeting, you can get to know. And if, if you guys do see some of the agents that introduced themselves today, hey, come on in. Uh, then uh, please just uh, just you know come up to them and and uh, and try to say hi to them, and uh, and uh, you know uh, make them feel warm and welcome at our company. Okay. This is an opportunity for people to meet each other. So, uh, if you're new to the company, if you don't mind, you know, stand up, stand up. If you're within the last two months, if you can stand up, please. And uh, and I'd like to introduce uh, introduce yourself and to the group, okay? So we're gonna start right here. What is your name? Right here. Hi, I'm Harry Yazar, and uh, I've been an agent for a few years. Uh, my background is engineering, construction, and contracting. And the last little thing I built, uh, the agent made more money than I did, so I decided I wasn't going to do it. So I've been doing this for 12 years. I have some experience in commercial, but uh, all the years that I worked with commercial brokers, I didn't learn half as much as this man taught me in the last few weeks here. So uh, I'm really happy to be here and be of service. All right. I'm really new and not new, Robert, because I used to be <laughs> My name is Lynn Delaney. I used to be with Adenio Vasco's organization. Okay, I read my background is corporate real estate. I've been corporate, did corporate real estate for as old as I'm um, <laughs> more, more than 25 years in the AT&T in the state of California. So I enjoy actually doing commercial more than residential. Because I think that's the most important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, I am um, I'm very happy to be uh, with this organization and as I see Robert provide all of the information, I said to myself, because I also came from Washington, I said to myself, this is one broker who really cares for the information. 
And you did that thing you stayed at. <laughs> yeah, you guys are surprising me. I, I never asked for that. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Right here? Who do we have here? Nice to meet you. Michelle Brown. Um, I met him just a couple of years ago. Retired from it. My background was in mortgage banking. I was with Lehman Brothers. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. The victim of my own children. Are you NMLS licensed? No. You should get it. Yeah. 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 Welcome. And, and back here, who do we have here? Sammy before, you know, a long time ago. Yeah, we've been around for a long time, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So let me get this over with. Uh, I'm not going to be myself today. Hopefully. Okay. Today I'm technically not going to be myself. Okay. Uh, go ahead and pull it up. I, I do. I'm inviting everyone to uh, to something uh, on the 10th and 11th. Okay. So. So yeah, so I, I lost my father yesterday. <laughs> so we've been dealing with a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna pass this around. How old was he? Eighty. Eighty. Yeah. So. So we're like. So my mind is everywhere. I haven't stopped yet. But business has to go on, okay? Yeah. Life doesn't stop for some reason. So. So sometimes, you know, you gotta just push through. You know, so. so my mind is in different places right now, but you know, you can't, you can't, you can't let that stop you. I just have to I just have to like turn this around. I can't keep looking at this. Think of all the good, man. Think of all the good. Eighty years is a good life. Yeah. Good legacy left behind. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Well it's hard. I'm an only child, so that's why it's a little bit difficult. Is your mom still there or not? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's tough on her. My mom, everyone here knows my mom. Most of you. Uh, how old is yeah. she? Yeah. She's the same age as my dad. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah, so we have to take care of a lot of stuff. Yeah. A lot of stuff. So who was more nice to your mom or dad? Both. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was very fortunate. All right. But uh, but the event is going to be a good event. Um, you know they have a viewing, and then the funeral. But we have a nice lunch after the burial too. You know I, I think that it's going to be pretty crowded, even though even though we but we made it very simple. Okay, so so you know how some places they have at church, and then you have the caravan to the yeah. burial site and and all that. But because there's so many people. We just, I, I just rented the place that where everything is in one spot, right. and then you walk literally 200 feet to where he's buried. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so it's actually, and we bought like the best plot there was. So, so it's like very convenient, and right after that there's lunch, okay? Okay, okay. Yeah, so feel free. All right, let's go. So if you don't see me for a couple days, you know why. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, 
so you know today's training it, there was other compliance things but man i just couldn't wrap it around my head you know <laughs> i couldn't do the wrap around my head so i wanted to go into a training a little bit about life and success today you know and and uh, i think uh, i think that's important you know, uh, there are 10 things, so if you have your notes, get this down, because this is something I prepared to teach you for a while, you know, and, uh, and I think it's very important to know some of these things. You know, I, one of the things that I thought is that, and, and I'll start with that, is that in a market that's going to be on the slow side, you know, this is actually your opportunity to really take your business to the next level. What I mean by that is that so many of the businesses that failed, okay, and so many businesses are the biggest businesses in the world today, are the ones that started and thrived in a bad economy. You know, the last compliance meeting we had, I gave you 12 things. Remember that? I gave you 12 things yeah. to do for your market to boom in the in the in the when when things are basically a little bit slower right yeah you know i told everyone and then i've been teaching the last three weeks so i don't know if everyone's been to my classes raise your hand if you've been to my last three classes you know and and you know my last three classes that i taught and you could actually go back and watch the videos right student yeah <clears throat> one of the classes is how to deal with the courthouse sale one of my classes is how to deal with courthouse sales and uh, trustee sale foreclosures. One of the classes is basically dealing with how to sell HUD homes. We're closing another HUD home today, all right? And my staff, uh, you know, Alejandra is very familiar with closing HUD homes because there's a whole new pro there's a whole different process to it. Uh, we trained you how to do the VA foreclosure. Last week, remember I, I taught you, we, we, we showed you how to do the VA foreclosure last week? Yes. Okay. We showed you how to handle the short sale. And we took two classes on that, the short sale process. And we, when we handled the short sale, I showed you uh, mm -hmm. what you had to do with loss mitigation. You know, we went over all of the forms. Remember last week we went over all like the 15, 16 company forms that were created to handle short sales? Yes. Uh, the next time I do class, okay, is going to be at the class on how to do REO foreclosures, how to handle Fannie Mae foreclosures, Freddie Mac foreclosures, uh, how to hand, work with uh, asset managers on handling foreclosure, getting foreclosure accounts. That's our next class. There's a reason I teach you how to do those skills, and and I mean, I, and I mention it in class, but not everyone that comes to class you know is here you know some people don't come to class but the reason why I mention those kind of things is that when the market is slow if you know how to do that type of real estate not only do you survive but you thrive you know I, I've had great friends uh, throughout all these years like you know for being like a brother to me we, we've been working together how many years now man 16 17 years right and when the market was at its slowest, Praveen was at his busiest. Is that right? He was at his busiest. When the market was at its best, he always did well. All these, all these 15, 17 years he's been with me. But when the market was at its worst, he had his record years. So in 2000, and, in 2000 and, because he represents Sandy May, the, in 2020, you have to ask yourself something, okay? Do you want it to be one of your best years or do you want it to be, you know, a year you get out of real estate? You know, between the years of 2006 and 2010 and 11, we lost almost half of our industry. Almost, you know, like almost half or or maybe not half, but you know, 30, 40% of the agents who practice real estate, they left the business. So you have to ask yourself, well, they left the business because they didn't adapt to a different economy. Does that make sense? Yeah. The people 
that were growing strong in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010. They were breaking records when the business gets good. You understand that? They're breaking records when the business got good. So that's why when I'm teaching you, because I told people, you know, most people, a lot of people in the past five or 10 years, you know the loans they get? They get FHA loans where they put 3.5% down. They get conventional loans where they put 5% down, right? So let me ask you something. When you're putting 35 to 5% down, the market doesn't need the tank to go into a short sale market. The market doesn't need the tank for you to be underwater. And that's when people are looking for short sales, okay? So in 2020, when people say, well, there's gonna be recession. In the next four years, there might be recession. But I'm telling you, the market doesn't have to tank for short sales to pop up. Because when people are putting three to 5% down, the market just needs to correct. It needs to go down 5% for people to be underwater. Does that make sense? So what I'm saying is that we're preparing people early, right? We're preparing you early to prepare for those types of clients' needs that will come up in the future. Does that make sense? So that's why, that's why my classes are very important. But, but the thing is that if you miss them, it doesn't mean that they'll never come back around. It means that you just have to go send Sir Druda an email and start going online taking those classes. Does it make sense? Okay. Hey, there's some seats. Feel free. Come on in. Yeah. So, so, so that those are the type of things that you can prepare, prepare, prepare yourself because, like I said, when the market is not as strong, or when we're in a recession period, the people that thrive during this time and the businesses that pick up during this time, you are actually setting yourself up for life, okay? Because when you have everyone competing, it's hard to gain the most important thing in business. It's called market share. When we were back in 2003 and everything is booming, there were all types of banks competing with each other and no one could come out as king. You know, there was Washington Mutual, there was Countrywide, there was AmeriQuest for the subprime and the call centers. There was, you know, uh, Bank of America and Wells Fargo, Washington Mutual, even the smaller ones, AccuBank, Greenpoint, New Century, right? There are all these companies, and they're all pretty big, they're all billion dollar companies. Lehman Brothers, all these big companies. But then, when the market tanked, some got saved, some didn't. Now, when you say, who are the biggest? You don't say World Savings anymore, right? Because you know what? They're out of business. You don't say Washington Mutual anymore. They're no longer around. You don't even say Countrywide anymore. You don't say, you don't say any of those names. You just say Bank of America, Chase, or Wells, right? See, the companies that survive during the downturn or get saved are the only companies around to be monsters because it, while all the other companies are closing down, you're gaining market share. For all of the agents here, you can look at a recession in 2020 to 2023 or 24. You can look at a slowdown as a bad time in business, a time to get out of the industry, or you can look at yourself as I will be the next super monster in this business. Does that make sense? The people are here for the long term. In a way, if you change the way you look at the industry, you are looking forward to this time. Does it make sense? Yeah. For a company like me, I'm looking forward to expanding the next three, four years. Because why? Because I'm for sure know that there's probably hundreds of brokers out there 
that won't be able to keep their doors open in 2021. There'll be hundreds of brokers out there, I know, who don't own their own building, who doesn't have everything set up, haven't been through this before, that started their company three, four years ago, right? They're not gonna be able to survive. Not gonna be able to survive. So it's a perfect time for me to offer, to, uh, to offer them the opportunity to close down their office and bring their company over to mine. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm preparing mm -hmm. for. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You see? For you, there's gonna be thousands and thousands of agents Come on in, Ling. We have seats. There's thousands. There's gonna be thousands and thousands of agents, guys, that are gonna be getting out of the business. You know what your opportunity is? Your opportunity is to take over the clients that they won't help anymore. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's why going into 2020, it's October, guys. We almost have Halloween. Okay. You know, two more months, the year's over. And and I remember my New Year's party. I remember some of you guys, you know, dancing and having fun at New Year's. And we're about to have our second, another New Year's party coming up here soon. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Do you guys remember our last New Year's party? I remember Nancy and and uh, and 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 and, uh, and uh, Angelo. All dancing in my music room, and I had to stand there and protect my, my amps because I put them on the ground. So all night long, I'm standing there protecting my amps. Okay, don't stomp on my amps. You know, I, was, I remember that. You know, and so the thing is that the thing is that now is a great time to prepare yourself for a great 2020. If you don't prepare yourself for it, then prepare for a reduction in your income. If you don't prepare to gain new market share, then prepare for a reduction in your income and start managing your costs better. <laughs> even myself, you know, I even myself, because I, I work on high volume but no low margin. I don't know if you guys know how a company like that works. I work on high volume, low margin. That means I pay you guys pretty well as a company. Does it make sense? Yes. And so any kind of change I have to I have to actually make make a uh, I'd be ready for it. So I even told my wife, I said, hey, got to be very careful with expenses in 2020. You have to be very careful, you know, with expenses. You know what I'm saying? You know? And, and be very smart about what you spend on. Because guys, to be honest, I bet you, all of you have splurges. I'm sure all of you have some type of online account where you pay 30, 40, 50 dollars a month for. That, that you're not using and you just keep paying for it over and over because you just forget to cancel it. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I know my kids have these crazy music mm. music apps that they pay $19 a month and it, it charges straight to one of our credit cards and we don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> really, you know I mean? Like for example, I found out that, you know, YouTube TV costs 30, 40 bucks a month that my kids watch, like YouTube Red or whatever it is. Yeah. And they, they each have an account. <laughs> <laughs> Even though one account you get to share with three other people. <laughs> but each of them have their account. I mean, there's just things that all of a sudden you guys have really, during the time you make money, you're not careful how you spend it. Yeah. So all of you, in, in, in the next month, you should just stop and literally understand where you stand. You may not know right now because you're making good money, but when the money goes down 10%, Maybe that's all you're saving. If it goes down 10%, you have nothing left to save. If it goes down 15%, you will basically now be in a negative. And you will start sucking from, from savings. You know what I'm saying? And then you don't know because you don't realize that stuff until your savings are gone and then one of your check bounces. You don't want to get to that point. You see? So everyone needs to determine where you're at. Okay? You know, because times do change. Does it make sense? And it's good advice from your broker, okay? So there's 10 things I'd like to talk to you about, all right? And, and, and you know, I thought it was a very powerful topic to talk to you about, okay? One of the things that, that uh, one of the things, and then these are 10 very powerful skills to really make you a better business person leading up into the next year, okay? Uh, one of the one of the, the first thing is life is much simpler when you 
than we've been be led to believe. Okay, yes, life is actually much simpler okay, than what you've been led to believe. You know, these are 10 things that will help you become better people, better business people, better fathers, better mothers, and, you know, better husbands and wives, you know. You know, one of the things that we need to, we need to be able to do is actually just simplify ourselves, okay? One of the things we have to do, you know, and for 2020 and for this year's coming up, especially leading up to a, is that me? No. Okay. You gotta turn that off. I'll wait for you. <laughs> okay. So life is simple. Okay. Don't overcomplicate it. Okay. Don't overcomplicate. Don't overcomplicate life. Okay. You know. Put a list. And and when I say that. You know, and I try to practice it in what I do, is that this is, I think, one of the most important skills in success, is that when you make life so complicated, you get nothing done, and you achieve nothing, okay? You know, they have a study, and I want to I wanna show you why some people are very successful and some people aren't. And believe it or not, the, the most successful people, you know, my top producers in loans and real estate, Believe it or not, they all produce like crazy, but their life is pretty simple. And then the reason why they're top producers is very simple. And if you could do this for yourself, if you could do this for yourself, you will change your level of success for the rest of your life, okay? All right? So I'm going to teach you one little skill that, that I hope to change your life, okay? And that's skill number one. You got to simplify your life. And what I mean by this is this. When you have over 10 things that you want to get done, believe it or not, your likelihood of accomplishing all 10 things is almost 0%. Mm -hmm. Or accomplishing it perfectly is almost 0%. Okay? When you have 10 different goals that you want to achieve, chances are you'll accomplish none of them. If you have five to seven things you want to achieve, chances are you might accomplish maybe one or two of them. And the one or two of them you accomplish are probably the least important of the seven. Mm -hmm. If there's less than five things that you've determined their goals that you want to achieve and they're specific enough, chances are you might get half of those five things done. But they said that if, there, if you narrow down your life to three, you know, two or three most important things you want to get achieved, super important things in your life you want to get achieved, chances are you get them all done. Chances are you get them all done. Okay? You know, chances are you get them all done. You know that my life is actually, believe it or not, okay, you know, my life is actually sort of, in a way, simple. Because I've always lived it that way. The way I am is when I start something, you know, I mean, I have all these little projects that I do. But I always have two or three things that are super urgent and important for me to achieve. And so, I always am able to achieve those three things. And, and, and when they get done, then I move on. Mm -hmm. One of the things, what I mean by making life simpler, is that all of you should have a very short list of two or three things that are the most urgent and most important thing for you to do. And you focus on those things until they get done. Trust me, life will continue. But you need to make 
those three things the most urgent and important things in your life to get done. You know, there's things that we have to get done no matter what. You know, for those of you who came late, one of the things that I have to get done no matter what is that I have to get my dad's funeral done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? No matter what. No matter what. So, you know, yesterday I'm at the funeral house picking coffins and caskets and plots and, mm -hmm. and, and picking the corners for the casket and picking, yeah. man, I never knew. There were so many things to pick out. Oh, yeah. Then later on after this, I have to go to the, the Vietnamese newspapers to put yeah. you know, the, the obituary in there so to, to make it public notice so all his friends will know. Mm -hmm. I have to get a list of who I'm gonna invite and who has to know about all this stuff. I mean, but on the 11th, when he goes into the ground, mm -hmm. It's going to get done. Does it make sense? So you just have to deal with that. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, I, we all lose loved ones. You know, I, I want to offer my condolences to Doug. You know, Doug last, uh, uh, last week lost his mom suddenly. You know, suddenly, you know, but we have, we are family, so we're all there for each other. And, and the thing is that, Sometimes, when it's that important, you just get stuff done, right? No matter everything that's around you, that you're pulled in all these different directions, when you have to get it done, you got it done. The thing is that why don't you make some of your, why don't you make some of the goals that you have? It's like being better, getting this marketing campaign out, getting a better marketing campaign. You know, things that improve you. You know, we're so, you know, starting, starting a new, you know, me and Doug are partnering up together to do something very, very powerful with expanding, you know, and, and, and with some of my loan company, we're expanding our mortgage to other states and so forth, and we're working together to do things. I mean, you know, we've been pushing forward, and we're going to get it done because it's one of my priorities. You know, these are things we're going to get done, so they will get done. So one of the things that you need to add into your life to be successful is that if you put your mind into something, you gotta put it on your list of this is my most important thing, these are the three most important things I need to get done, and you just say, I just gotta do these things. If your list has more than three items on that list, the likelihood of you getting those things done is gonna go down exponentially. If you have this top 10 get need to get done list out there and goals in your life, you're not gonna get any of, them, any of those things done. I mean, some of you, you it's like, I wanna, I wanna be a better reader. I wanna be, lose weight. I wanna make more money. I wanna do this. And you have, you have a list of these 10, 20 different goals you wanna do, and, and you live your life never getting any of these things done. One of the things about business and life is that you have to make, okay, yourself three extraordinarily important things in your life that you need to get done. And you say, I'm going to get these three things done. And if you prioritize those three things, they'll get done. And then you can move on to your next three things. Does it make sense? Yeah. And then you will spend your life accomplishing everything that you wanted in your life. It's like a wedding for your kid or for yourself. When you needed to get it done, you got it done. Right? Yeah. But... If, 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 if you have goals and but you don't prioritize three of them that this is urgent for me to get done then then you'll never get it done so for business you know for business I mean I know that we all have our things we need to get done in life but for 2020 I want everyone to choose one thing or two things specifically to build your business that you say, this is urgent for me to do. Building a, a social media campaign that I am, so, so the goal is I'm gonna be the social media king of real estate next year. And that's my goal, that's my ultimate goal. And, and so then you will do everything you can possible to build yourself as the social media king. I'm gonna be the top REO listing agent in all of Sacramento in 2020. And I'm gonna do everything I can to be one of Sacramento's top REO agents in 2020. 
then, then you do everything you can because that's my one goal I want to be. Does it make sense? You know, I'm going to be the top luxury listing agent in, in Granite Bay next year. I'm going to be the top agent in Laguna next year. Okay? And, and that's, that's, a very, that's a specific enough goal for you to, for you to, uh, for you to, um, to go out there and, and, and achieve. So number one, most important thing to do is that you have to be simple and prioritize your goals. Number two on our list of, of, of success points, okay? Number two on our list of success points. Very, very important, all right? Is repetition is the mother of skill. So the first thing I taught you is you gotta simplify your goals and make two or three of them super important. Super important. Because if you focus on your wildly important goals, just the two or three, the chances of you accomplishing those goals is almost 100%. You add three more, you've cut it down to almost nothing. Believe it or not. If you have more than five, chances are you get one done. You have more than seven, chances are you had zero done. Isn't that crazy? When you have that many goals, you had nothing done? But if you just get two goals, three goals, you can accomplish all three. Okay? The next one is repetition is the mother of skill. Man, when I have so many things going on in my mind, and, and you, this, today's a testament to it, okay? I, you have challenges. Your life is one of my greatest challenges right here as we speak, to be able to stand in front of a room and do my thing. Okay, when I have no sleep. Okay, and uh, and uh, but the thing is that for all of you, those who know me, know that I've been in front of the room for twenty something years. I mean, I have agents here who've been with me for twenty years, and I'm the same twenty years ago. I've always been in front of the room. So when I'm in front of a room. My mind goes into automatic mode. See, I don't teach from notes, really. I just have my topic and I just go, okay? And so repetition is the mother of skill. That's why I could go up in this room and just go. I, I could talk for the next four hours if, if I need to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and because I've been doing it for so long. I'm so good at it already. Well, what if I told you, come in for a train for the next two hours, how, how successful will you be, you know? Uh, without any notice. Just come up here right now and start teaching. It's gonna be tough, right? Well, the thing is that when you decide to do something in real estate, in this business, I bet you right now, some of the expert realtors in this room, you can work with, you could write up a real estate purchase agreement and work with a buyer like it's the back of your hand. You've been doing it for so long. It's so easy, right? Some of you people, some of the people that do loans, I'm sure you could take a loan application and pre-qualify someone <coughs> instantly. It's so easy for you. What I'm trying to say is, is you got to choose something you want to do in real estate and become an expert at it, at it by just doing it. Don't read about it. Don't read about it. Do it. You know that I think that in 2020. Learning how to do seminars in this boardroom in front of the room just like me is going to be a very important skill to have. I've been telling people. Conducting lunch and learns, Doug conducts lunch and learns. You know, I've, I've conducted trainings for years. The ability to go up to the front of the room and, and talk, there's no more proof that you need to, to, for the people in front of you to prove that you're an expert in what you do if you're brave enough to stand in front of a room, okay? So you know what that means? It means that seminars in the next three years are gonna be big. You know you know they call that term? They call that term seminar selling. Have you ever heard that term seminar selling? Seminar selling is one of the most popular forms of gaining client trust there is. It's called seminar selling. Because the, the presenter in any seminar is always looked at as the expert on the topic. Whatever you talk about, when you're in front of a room, people sort of look at you as the expert on that topic. So 
when you decide that you're going to do, uh, uh, when you decide that you're going to do work with, you know, a first time home buyers, foreclosure home buyers, people who are in the middle of trying to short sell their home, cry people in crisis management because they're losing equity in their home, whatever it is, people who are investors who want to buy foreclosure homes, man, just do a seminar. And you say, well, I don't know what to say. Trust me. If your seminar is at 10 a.m., on that day at 10 a.m., you're going to get up here and you're going to say something. Because most people, they're only going to remember a portion of what you say. Unless you're, out, uh, unless you're just horrible up in front of the room, whatever you say, they think you're good. Just because you're up here. Does that make sense? Right? Have you ever had a bad teacher? I'm sure you've had. You say, my teacher's bad, but you never question if he knows what he's talking about. Okay? Because he's in front of the room. He must know what he's talking about. He might give you bad information. But you believe it. Because why? Because he's up in the room. It's just like, okay? So because of that, repetition is the mother of skill. You just got to get out there and start doing it over and over again until it becomes, you become an expert at it. And it doesn't mean you have to do seminars. You know, if you say, okay, Robert, I I'm going to get started in real estate. And I'm just going to do the basics right now. I'm just going to keep making phone calls. You know, one of my, you know, you know, uh, one of my great agents in the past, one of my top agents ever, you know what he did? And I know, I know you know where this comes from. You know what he did? He was shy. The first thing he did, he said, I'm going to be an expert at it. The first thing he did was he said, hey, Robert, you know what? I was never very good at this, but I, I wanted to be an expert at it. He goes, every day I just make 20 calls. He straight up said, hey, Robert, every day I make 20 calls. And I taught him how to do it. I, he was doing my ABCD system. And he just said, hey, Robert, and I, I want to keep it simple because life is simple, right? He just said, hey, Robert, every day I listen to you, and this is the agent with me 15 years ago. And now he's been a top producer for me for the last 15 years. He, I, and he said, and I know he doesn't change his routine. He goes, every day I just make 20 calls. Every day, you know, at first it was hard because I had to force myself to do it. But right now, every day at around 10 a.m., I make 20 calls until I stop making calls. Okay? And normally it takes, I said, how long did it take you? He said, it takes me exactly an hour and 30 minutes. And so every day his routine is that he just makes his 20 calls. And I said, well, who do you call? I just call people on my prospect list. Who's on your prospect list? People who are on my cell phone. How many people are on your cell phone? I have over, over a thousand people on my cell phone. So if you hit 20 people a day, how many people do you call a week? I think I call around, uh, you know, 100 new people every single week. You know, every month I call 400 people. But the thing is that, isn't it something so simple? Like one of the things in real estate is so simple. If you're a loan officer, I say your goal is 25. You call 25 agents every single week. 25. Five agents a day. You just call 25 agents and, and you just say, hey, you know, I'm one of the top loan officers in town. I'm with a company where our rates are the top rates in the state. And, and you know, I just want to be able to offer my service is awesome, but more than my service, I'm giving the clients the, a, a better loan than they can get anywhere, even online sometimes. And, and I want to build a relationship with you. And, and if you call 25 people a week, if 24 people turn you down, then you're a failure. You suck. You suck so bad that every single week you start working with one new realtor. You suck so <laughs> bad. That every month you work with four new realtors. You suck so bad that in a matter of a, of a year, you're working with 50 realtors. And in a year from now, if 50 realtors are sending you loans every single month, then you suck so bad that in a year from now, you're closing 40, 50 deals a month. That's how bad you are. If you get turned down, 24 out of every 25 people you call. You see, th th does it make sense that, that, that you don't have to get a yes every single time to be successful. You know, you don't have to get a yes every single time to be successful. You can get, you can get a no 95% of the time.
And that 5% of yeses can create relationships for you, real estate relationships for you for the rest of your life. For those people who are loan officers and you working with realtors that give you deals, can you imagine how many realtors didn't work with you that you met? Can you imagine how many realtors you've given your business card that don't send you business every month? But can you imagine how successful you are now with all the realtors that do send you business? The thing is, guys, you know, so next lesson is that repetition is the mother of skill. Man, just get out there and do it. Whatever you decide is the three most important things in your life to do, then you just got to go do it. And do it until you're so good at it. One of the questions that you have to ask yourself is, is what skill and what thing in real estate do I do that I'm so good that I can do it with my eyes closed? That, that I am the expert at it. You know, when I was in real estate, I was an expert at foreclosure homes. I was so good at it that I still remember my 30-second speech on that today. Oh, yeah, one of the reasons you want to work with me is because I'm a government foreclosure expert. I sell homes with housing and urban development and the Department of Veteran Affairs, and I also help clients who are investors buy homes from the courthouse steps. So the reason why you want to work with me as a realtor is because I can sell more types of homes to you than any other agent in Sacramento. And that was my 30-second speech. I still remember it until this day because I said it so many times. You understand that? I haven't sold a home for 15 years. But I still remember my elevator speech, and I don't, I don't stutter on it. I remember, the, yeah, the reason why you want to work with me is because I'm a government foreclosure specialist. I represent housing, urban development, and Department of Federal Affairs. I said it so many times in my life. You see it? You understand? I say it the same way every time, so many times in my life. But see, I didn't have a thousand different pitches. I had one. So that's why I'm training you how to do this, because you could copy my, my elevator pitch if you want. I don't want you to say, well, I could sell homes and housing urban development if you're going to sign up for us. I can't tell you. You can't say I, I represent Department of Veteran Affairs on their foreclosure homes if, if you don't even know how to do it. That's why I'm training you how to do it. I'm a bank foreclosure expert. That's the reason why you want to work with me is because of this. It's like, so you, you got it because I've said it so many times that repetition has turned me into an expert. Does it make sense? Okay. Number three. Number three. Three is called uh, blast off. Blast off. But uh, write this word immersion. Immersion. Blast off. I think. That in 2020, starting now, if you choose one of your three goals to do, I want you to immerse yourself and, and blast yourself off and start doing it with all of your energy to get those three things done. You got to ask yourself, do you have those three absolutely most important goals in your life? Do you have, you know what those three things are? For those of you who build a team or or we're starting a company and, and, and we're, we're going to be building a team, then building that team, if that's your number one goal, then you got to immerse yourself into all those activities every single day to get that done. My goal is to build 10 new agents on my team so I can get that residual income from those 10 agents every single, and I got to do it every single month. You got to immerse yourself into that. Whatever you do, do it at your fullest potential where you could stop at the end of the day and said, there's nothing else I could have done. You know that me, immersing myself in something is just a part of what I do. That's the way I am. Those of you who know that, that you know, I, I've had hobbies in my life, you know, you know and, and, and Koi was one of them. I must have changed out my Koi collection like 10 times <laughs> because... Because every time I got a nice koi, I always wanted to get a better koi. And pretty soon, I got a group of koi, then I sold them all and got another group of koi. And my koi, at first, I, I thought buying a $100 koi was just like, was like absolutely incredible. But then I met someone that made fun of my $100 koi. So I, I started buying $300 koi. And after I ran into the guy, another guy who was competing koi, one time it was so funny because, you know, I had all these koi 
And I thought these were so koi, right? So I ran an ad in the paper because I needed to sell some of my koi because I wanted to buy better koi. And, and I ran an ad in the paper and, 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 and I ran it on the post on the, on, on, on the, on the YouTube post. Oh, not YouTube, but on like the, you know, like the koi post. And then this guy from San Jose, uh, he, 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 he responded. He said, I'm going to come over and see what koi you have for sale. And I'm going to buy it. And, and, and we were talking and I'm going to, and I sent him a text saying, I'm going to blow your mind with how beautiful my koi are. You know, he walked over, looked at the koi for five minutes, he drove all the way from San Jose, two and a half hours to get to my home. He went, looked at my koi, and said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not interested. And he left after five minutes. And I had to stop and say, well, what do you mean? I thought I had to show koi. He laughed at me. And, and he went home. And, and, and so I became friends with him. We became almost best friends. And he, and, and he started educating me. So instead of uh, him buying koi from me, okay, I started buying koi from him. <laughs> So he took me, and he was selling me his garbage koi. No, not his garbage koi, because every koi he had was nice, but he sold me his lower koi so he could buy better koi. So now I've graduated from, you know, a $300 koi to a $1,000 koi, right? So you keep graduating, okay? And, and, and after I graduated from my $1,000 each koi, you know, I, after looking at all his koi, I, I started buying his koi that he didn't like, because at the time he was buying $5,000 koi, and, and so I was buying his $1,000 koi that was willing to sell for me for 1000 So when I started buying his $1,000 koi, he started buying $15,000 koi. So then, and then I found myself buying his $5,000 koi, right? And I just kept upgrading <laughs> to the point where my koi started costing as much as cars, okay? And, and, then, and, then, and then when they started dying, you know, I'm thinking, man, I'm losing a car every other day, you know? And, and, and uh, this is not a good investment. <laughs> cars don't die, but... Fish do, you know. So then, all of a sudden, I remember one time I had to take one of my koi because it had a, it was sort of sick. So, so I, I took it to, I took the day off and took it to UC Davis, you know, Exotic oh. Animal Hospital. And I was uh, sitting there. They asked me, you know, uh, to, to take a look at the koi. I came back with a four thousand dollar bill because they did an X-ray and a CAT scan on it. <laughs> And I remember me and him just sitting there just laughing because, because for moral support, he actually made, he actually came down to give me support. When I take my kids, I don't need support, but when I take a coin to the hospital, I needed mental support. You know what I'm saying? So he actually met me at the UC Davis Hospital to, to give me moral support, you know? And, and they did a CAT scan and an and a x-ray. To found out that my koi had an eating disorder, you know, and asked me if I wanted to have surgery on the koi so it would open up his food tract, you know. I didn't want to do it, so I decided, well, I'm going to go home, and, and, and so I, me and my friend, we bought all the medicine to put the fish to sleep. We, we ran oxygen to its uh, gills, and we tried to do our surgery ourselves. So, so after paying like 6000 for the koi and, and, and paying 4000 for x-rays and CAT scans and ultrasound, too. We did ultrasound, too. And, and, and we decided that let's go ahead and, and, and operate on the koi ourselves. It didn't make it. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, and uh, but 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 so I so you understand. You know, now my collection of koi is one of the top collections in the country, and I forgot to fed my fish this year. And when I said I forgot to feed my fish this year, I forgot to feed them for the entire year. Yeah, I sort of got out of it, you know. So 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 I haven't fed them for two and a half years, and they're the most you know they're the most healthy koi in the planet. You know why? Because koi they could. They're, they're foragers. Whatever falls in the pond, they eat. And then algae naturally grows in the pond, and they eat from the algae. So technically, you don't even have to feed them. They'll just, you know, they live off the land. You know what I'm saying? You know, why they were always getting sick is because my butt was, uh, every time I saw something wrong, I'd take a big old net and start chasing them all around. You know, and then I'd net them up. And after I'd net them up, I'd look at them, you know? And then I'd put them to sleep and give them inspections. I would inspect them. And then no wonder they're so stressed out, they kept dying, you know? <laughs> you know, I just figured out that it wasn't because they were sick, it was because I just kept stressing them out, <laughs> you know? And, 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 and so, and so, so that's, so, so, but, but what I'm trying to say is whatever I get into, I get into to the extreme, okay? I did the same thing with uh, audio systems, okay? For those of you who know me, I did the same thing with audio systems. No, I'm a Sagittarius, but, but, but whatever I do, I, I do to the fullest extent. You gotta live your life that way. Thank God my new hobby right now, don't, 
So I told my wife, I said, see, when I talk about nice body and beautiful skin, I don't talk about women. You know? <laughs> I talk about a fish. <laughs> You know, you know, if, 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 if would you rather me talk about women or a fish? <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, and 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 so I've never like I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't gamble, I don't go around play with my friends and leave family. I don't do any of that. So my hobbies are my hobbies. You know, just be happy with the hobbies I have. You know, and, 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 and guys, I, I think that all of us have passions. When I say the item number three for success is you got to immerse yourself and have passion. You know, some of you have a passion. Like I, I know women have a passion sometimes for nice things. Can you imagine the first purse you bought, you know, was you thought it was great. I, hey, I bought this purse for $300 or $200. And pretty soon you discovered name brands. Like my, my daughters are discovering name brands right now. Uh oh. I see. I say uh oh, because I'm I'm hoping they discover Target. Uh -oh, but 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 they go with my wife so often that they discover they discover brands. You know, you know because you 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 go from brands like you know that you see and then now you go to Abercrombie and you start going to. Yeah, you, you start, what is that? Versace. Versace. See, no, you go. Kusachi. Oh, Kusachi. Ross, $20. Oh, Kusachi. See? <laughs> See, that, that, that's better. Yeah, yeah Kusachi. <laughs> but but then, you know, but. Uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, it's Gucci plus Versace. It's yeah. got a Kusachi. <laughs> it's even better. <laughs> a, 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 a Gucci and a Versace together, married together, should make a, 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 make a double brand, right? <laughs> But too bad, too bad. If you marry Gucci and Versace, you get Hermes, and then you're in trouble. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, you're in trouble. So like, you know, like even even people. After a while, you know, at first you buy your first hundred dollar purse, a two hundred dollar purse, and you think, man, I, I'm making a big move. And then pretty soon you discover that there's there's brands like Louis Vuitton, and now you're paying a thousand or two or three thousand. And but even those brands graduate. Those brands, at first, their purses are one or two thousand dollars. Now they graduate to having five, ten thousand dollar purses. Even the brand itself evolves, as a brand evolves, mm -hmm. and so other brands. So then, once you get past that brand, you go into like Chanel, and 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 when you get past Chanel, you graduate in a way to Hermes, and when you graduate from Hermes, I, I swear, I hope there's no brand that's above that one. Okay. <laughs> You know, I'm sure there is. This is. I haven't heard of it, but I'm just like, but, but for you, I want you to treat this real estate business. I want you to graduate from making fifty or hundred thousand dollars a year, graduate to making hundred fifty, two hundred thousand a year, so you taste what it's like to make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. And then, then when two hundred comes, I want you to graduate and start making five hundred thousand a year. And then one day you're gonna graduate. And you're gonna know what it's like to make a million dollars in a year. You know what I'm saying? And 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 get to that point. But the only way you get to that point is if you become a fanatic. You know, I have a fanatical mentality, okay? And because of that, I'm able to do what I do. Because everything I do, I try to be, be uh, try to be insanely good at, it, right? Yeah. Not normal at it. I want to be insanely good at it. Right. Okay. Number four. You know, maybe today I won't be able. I'll, I'll try to go to the topic really fast, okay? Um, because I need to hand out my awards real quick. So I'm going to give you the. If, if you don't mind, I'm going to give these ten to you really fast, and then and then I'll expand on it at our next meeting, okay? okay. But number five, and I'll go through pretty fast. We only have three, four minutes. Number four, number four learn to be in a beautiful state, okay? Sure. You know, the thing is that I'm going to tell you something, and this is one of the most powerful things I'll ever tell you, is the fact that. Your negative energy or your positive energy determine how successful you're going to be. That's true. Okay, I, I'm telling you that much right now. That's true. If 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 you're positive about being successful, okay, you will be successful if you just keep positive mm -hmm. about it. Be happy, mm -hmm. man. I have the greatest reason in the world right now to be very sad. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
okay? But just got to just, man, get your mind back into a positive state. Because it, even if you're going through the toughest time, toughest time in your life, if you cannot maintain positive state, you can put a gun to your head, okay? You, you, you're going to, it's going to be hard. And the hard in your life will continue to overlap each other and you will pull each other down. Does that make sense? Man, if it's happened, it's happened. It's water under the bridge. Now we just got to move forward and try try to find positivity in it. Right? You know, the most positive thing, like, for example, my mom just lost my dad, you know, so how I'm keeping positive because, man, you know, I lost my father, but my mom lost her soulmate. So the most positive thing I can do is just be positive for her. You know what I'm saying? So, so like for example, for example, immediately, like you know, like uh, I, we need to get all these things done. But probably the week after the funeral, I'll be gone for like ten days. I want to take my mom somewhere with my kids because now it's her time to be able to bond with my family. So, so we're just gonna find a place. I'm just gonna take her for five, ten days, and we're just gonna go. So she has time with my because after the barrel, I think it'd be very hard for her too. So so I'm just gonna. I, I told my wife, hey, we just gotta put everything down and go with her for a week or so, and have her spend time with her grandkids, get her mind off of it. You know, what I'm saying that after that, we have to figure out how her life is gonna be. You know, can't live by herself. So I'm thinking, okay, is she gonna move in with me, or or how's it gonna work here? You know, what I'm saying, you know, what's gonna happen now? Okay, because because what happens is that when you're that age and you lose your soulmate. If, if, you, if things don't happen, you might go yourself. And, and trust me, I'm super close to my mom. So, man, you know, how I'm acting right now, my mom passed away that man. And I probably won't see me for a month. Okay, so, <clears throat> I mean, I was really close. I was the only child. You know, I was really, really close. So, so, and then all of you know Miss Doe, right? Most of you know my mom. So, you know, you know how close and how much she does with the office and so forth. You know, it hasn't been a lot lately because she's been taking care of my dad all these years. But, number five. <clears throat> to be successful, this is very important, okay? Very important. One of the most important things to be successful is you got to always talk about it. Whatever you decide are your three most important goals in your life that you need to get accomplished, you need to tell the world and make it public. You got to talk about it. Dream about it. Plan it. Spend the money that you think you're going to be making in your head. Put everything that you wanted to buy, that you wanted to, to accomplish, and what you can buy with what you can accomplish. Because the reason why I'm going to tell you is, if your dream is to make $1,000, and you get a list of all the pictures of all the things you buy for $1,000, you're not able to buy a lot. So if you know what your ultimate goal is and how you want your life to be, it's good sometimes to get pictures of the house that you want to live in or the car you want to drive or, or what you want to be able to purchase or have. And you've got to have it right in front of your face. Visualize yourself, you know, visualize yourself driving in your Ferrari. Because see, it's, it's like, I mean, think about it. You know, if, 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 your goal, if your goal one day is to have a used Yugo, then you accomplish your goal pretty damn easy. That's it, you're done. But if your goal is to live in a $10 million mansion and, and have a Ferrari and, 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 and be able to have a, millions of dollars in your bank account as disposable income. You know, I mean, you know that the average American at age, the average American at, at age 40 does not have $10,000 in their bank account. Okay? Uh, I'm not going to have you raise your hand. Okay? But, but, if, but I bet you. No, so don't do it. But I bet you if I asked you, do you have $10,000 of extra money right now? And if you, you have a wife, spouse, if the two of you have $20,000 extra in your bank account right now to spend on anything you want as extra spending money for fun, and raise your hand. I don't think the whole room will raise their hand right now. Okay? You're brave to say it, but, but, but I, I'm telling you, I don't think a lot of people can raise their hand. Okay? So if that's the case, I want to tell you, you're in the same shoes as the rest of America. We live in a culture that is always can only see what's in front of their nose, and they cannot see past 
into building for their future. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, it's time. Put your goals in front of your nose, okay? And talk about it, dream it, so you can achieve it. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'll give you this other five real fast because that's some of the work to give out, okay? Number six, leaders are readers. Always have a book. I'm a speed reader, so I read so much. You can ask me about many topics. I get to have conversations with you about it. You know, these days, internet makes it so easy for us to read. I read the whole CNN. I read the whole Sacramento Bee, everything, probably before most of you guys wake up, okay? Yeah, I'm already done reading from the articles. I mean, I, I look it up. I'm, I'm subscribed to sacb.com. I'm a subscriber. I'm working in the morning. Boom. I already read everything because it only takes me a minute to read every article. So it's like now you run out of things to do. Wow. So I read about the Niners, and I read about the New England Patriots, I read about Nick Bosa, I read about everything. <laughs> about the Kings, I read about the Rockets, I read about the Golden State Warriors. Because after a while, I just can't run out of things to read. I just read so fast. Because why? Because repetition. I'm so used to it that I just, I literally scrolling as I'm reading. Okay? And I get everything. I remember it. You know, it's just the way I am. So readers are leaders. Leaders read. Okay? Number seven. Okay, get rid, keep the good energy people by you. Get rid of everyone that gives you bad energy in your life. Okay, delete the people in your life that give you bad energy. Yeah, I'm telling you, okay, I, I'm literally telling you that, that, uh, that, that, that you got to delete the people that give you bad energy in your life. You know, if you focus on people that you're pissed at, man, this person, uh, this person gave me a bad comment on my Facebook. So what? Delete them. <laughs> Unfriend everyone that you think is negative to you on Facebook. Okay? Seriously. Number eight. Okay? Your environment, uh, this is almost like seven. Your environment is the source of your success. If you want to be part of a successful environment, surround yourself by success. Be in the right environment, okay? Or improve your environment. If you don't have a good relationship with your spouse, work on it now. Seriously, work on it. You know, or it's time. You know what I'm saying? But your environment is very important. You know, hopefully over here we share with you to be part of a good environment. Mm -hmm. Number nine, okay, this is sort of crazy, but number nine, laugh all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> number nine, laugh all the time. Maybe start, you know, start watching more comedies, you know, start, you know, believe it or not, laughter is very powerful. Yeah. No, laughter is very powerful. I mean, even though it's tough for me, I, I still can joke a little bit, right? Do I joke because I don't care? No. You know, I, you, you gotta. Sometimes you need to laugh. Like I was trying, trying to laugh at my mom. You know, I, I yesterday when we were talking about serious things, like you know, my dad's obituary, what to say. And you know, and 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 you know, and you know that the normal Vietnamese obituary in the Vietnamese newspapers, you know, you know, we, we call it burial, funeral, you know, and but these days you start seeing people call it celebration of life, you know, and I so I told my my uh, if I ever see me mention and say the word brother because my dad has other kids between my mom and my dad I'm an only child, but my father had kids from a previous marriage, so this is a time where we're we don't really we're not close. But, but because of this, you know, we all have to sort of work together, come together. You know what I'm saying? So as I was talking to my half-brother, uh, you know, he was, you know, we were saying, you know, we were talking about a little bit now, why is that funerals have to be so gloom? You know, and people call it funeral, but these days more, more though, so these days we call it celebration of life, right? But I did tell him, I said, well, we're Vietnamese, and in this culture, Man, if you call celebration of life, people might come with birthday presents, you know? <laughs> so, you know, they might not understand. So I told you, is it call it celebration? I said, no. I said, just call it what it is. Because if you call it that, you know, in my art culture, man, people think we're having a birthday party, you know? 
and it's definitely not a birthday party, you know. So, so, so it's it's so you know. I mean, you still have to find light, you know, find a little bit of laughter in life when things are hard. Okay. Yeah. So, so later, don't give me condolences. Really, just you know, I mean, just you know, I, I appreciate. I'm sure all of you guys, you know, uh, care. So I get it. Okay, I get it. Okay. Uh, and uh, and. <coughs> And uh, finally, this is uh, the last most important thing, is learn from your failures. Learn from them. Don't let those failures scare you away from success. Okay? Whenever you fail, every no is one step closer to a yes. If the very first person you call said no, do you quit? And then the more, the more yeses you get, the more frequent you get it. In life, learn from your failures. You can't always be perfect. If you let your failures defeat you, then you lost. But if you learn from their failures and you use those failures as a learning experience, then you will succeed. Okay? So, so those are the ten... The, those are the 10 things that hopefully will help you become a much better business person. Okay, so so let me, I have some special uh, awards for, for the people who are able to make it. Some people are online, but I, I'll recognize them. I have, is Michael Barnett here? Is, is Michael here? Uh, Did he come? Let me see. Okay, so I have some, so right now, we have uh, something new and fun, okay? For the mortgage and the Berkshire Hathaway, okay? All right? We have these nice medals, okay? We have these nice medals right here. One medal is the silver medal. Right here, so you put it on your head right here. And one medal is the gold medal. And, and, and we're going we're gonna to pass these out every month. Oh. So hopefully, every month, you can get these medals, and you can wear them around if you want all day long, or <laughs> you can start posting these medals, you know, with a nail on the wall and start collecting these medals, okay? Uh, the criteria for these medals is, um, and, you know, just to keep it simple, just to keep it simple, you know, uh, we, we do a combination of one or two things, you know. Uh, the simplest way for us to do it is if you close uh, three deals from any mo given month, all right, or uh, three deals for every given month, then we'll give you a silver medal. Anything more than that, any given month, we give you uh, a gold medal for the month. You know, I think that one deal for a month is sort of should be normal, okay? I think if you're at two, you know, you're doing, uh, you know, uh, you know, pretty standard, well for yourself. You know, two deals where you close eight thousand dollars each deal, you're making a couple hundred thousand a month a year. That's great. But uh, uh, but a deal that a month where you close three deals or more, or three deals, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good month, yeah, right? Uh, for for yeah. Does it matter the, the amount? Yeah. No, uh, it doesn't. But if there's a, a month where you just close a big commercial deal and and because a normal GCI for a deal is like maybe seven or eight thousand, if there's a month where you close the normal deal and one real big deal, we'll just count it as three deals. So does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So, so if, you, if there's a month where you just close one great commercial deal, we might even give you a gold medal for it. You know, does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we are looking at both GCI and which is the your gross commission, and uh, and uh, we're looking at uh, we're looking at uh, the 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 volume too. Okay. So let me go ahead. Uh, we have a. Uh, uh, you know, it's a great season for mortgage. You know, for those of you who are smart enough to do both real estate and mortgage or the people that do mortgages, it's a great time for us in mortgage. The reason why it was a great time for us in mortgage is because, you know, we're, we're in some of the lowest rates. You know, the, the feds dropped the rates to, to keep our economy going, right? So we were in a, a big time where we had a lot of refinances going on. So we had some, uh, quite a few people uh, qualify for a gold is anything more than four or more and so we have some gold medals to give out so uh, so uh, so let me just go ahead and give uh, some gold medal first gold medal okay uh, 
uh, we want to give out for mortgage. Uh, I don't know if, if you're here, but is Brandon? Brandon Wu, is he here? No, I don't see Brandon. I think he's online. But we have Sanji for a gold medal. Hello. For a gold medal here. There you go. Put it around your neck. See that? All right. Gold medal for loans. And, and these people, they consistently go more to, if, if, if I'd been doing this for the last year, they'd have a gold medal every month, you know, <laughs> because, because they've been really consistent like that. Next gold medal goes to Nancy. Nancy, gold medal. <laughs> Wear your gold medal proudly. Next gold medal for mortgages goes to Angelo. Angelo. Congratulations. There you go. See? And then later we all stand for national anthem, right? Uh, just to recognize Brandon Wu and Sukwinder. Sukwinder's in India, right? Okay, so if, if no, you don't mind, we give this to you. If you, if you see Sukwinder, you could give that to him for me. Okay. And then uh, next gold medal goes to our wonderful agent, Cyrus. Gold medal, Cyrus. All right. I need a ladder. <laughs> Last but definitely not least, gold medal. And I want to recognize Michael Barnett as well. He's not here. And I recognize Doug Ross. Gold medal. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. For real estate, we have quite a few, but but I'm going to hand out the the the. The silver medals here. People are here because we, we don't have, we actually have to get going and eat. And I, I know I ran over my time. So, so uh, let's, uh, um, uh, so that's our, our, our medalist here. Uh, we have another medal for the real estate side as well, not just a mortgage for Sanjeev again. Another medal. Like you're playing more than one event, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you're playing more than one event. So you have a gold and a silver. <laughs> yeah. With another medal for one of our great newer agents, actually, but but he's been killing it. Uh, Daniel Ofer. Daniel. <laughs> All right. All right. Good job. Another medal goes to Roboro Soto. Yay. All right. See, I'm always careful of messing up people's hair, so I just <laughs> avoid it altogether. Okay. I don't think um, Long, are you here? Some of our top top producers, they're just not here, so I just figure. Okay. Uh, Duk, are you here? Duk, Duk, Duk. I saw him earlier. Is he? Yeah. Okay, okay. So I'll, I'll just hand it to him. And then finally, uh, our last gold medal for the, uh, our last medal for the, for people who are here. There, there's more, but then we don't have a lot of time. And it recognizes, again, another medal, Nancy Chen. For the real estate side. Nancy's on the loan and the real estate side. Okay. All right. So, again, guys. You know, every month, you know, we want to try to handle the medal, you know, hand out medals, and and really just 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 it's our thank you to you guys for doing a, a great job in real estate, and and I know that some of you will get a lot a lot of uh, medals, and for some reason, if 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 we forgot something, let, let us know. If there's a month that you know, because you know we're only human, okay, right? and this is only for last month, all right, this is only for last month. We just started doing this. So we went through back all the months. I'm sure all of you guys will have all types of medals, okay? But we just sort of started this, so in the future we'll have a lot of this going on. 
Okay, so again, uh, again, can you put the funeral thing back on? Uh, you know, uh, from our family, from Teresa, for me, uh, I'd like to invite you to uh, my dad's uh, burial service on the 11th, uh, and then we have a viewing on the on the 10th. Okay, and then there's a uh, there's the burial service uh, on the on the 11th. There'll be a nice lunch uh, on the on the 11th. Okay. And uh, and then uh, that's basically it. So again, have a great uh, have a great potluck, and I'll talk to you guys in, in, in soon. All right.